At the start of the movie, two men who are in their middle age are walking in a building and talking about everyday things like getting married and having kids. There is also a young woman in a lab coat who is trying to tell them about something that happened in the Stockholm facility. However, the men do not seem to be worried about what she is saying. They say that the facility in Japan will do the job well, and that their US facility is not the best. Then, they ride on a golf cart and go away. The movie shows a room in a town where two girls, Dana and Jules, are talking about school. Dana had a romantic relationship with one of her professors, but it did not end well. Jules's boyfriend Kurt enters the room and throws a football at the girls. It goes out of the window and is caught by Holden, who is there to meet Dana. The guys have come to take the girls to a lakeside cabin for a long weekend. While they are getting ready to leave, their friend Marty arrives in his car, smoking pot from a big bong that can turn into a travel mug. We go back to the screens in the building we saw earlier. The two middle-aged men, Sitterson and Hadley, are watching everything that is happening. They have been giving the kids drugs, but they do not explain why. The group is near the cabin, but they stop for gas and directions. The person who helps them, Mordecai, is an old and unfriendly man who seems a little bit crazy. He warns them that it will be easy to get to the cabin, but they may have trouble getting back. The kids laugh at him, and he becomes rude and aggressive. He even calls Jules a bad name, almost causing a fight. They all get back in the RV and continue their journey. They have to go through a tunnel in the mountain that is shaped like a U to get to the cabin. A bird tries to fly over the ravine, but it hits something invisible and is electrocuted. Meanwhile, in the building, the phone rings and Hadley answers it. It is Mordecai, who tells them that the college kids are on their way to the cabin. He also tells them how close they were to messing everything up and warns them to be careful. Hadley puts Mordecai on speakerphone, which makes him angry. He hangs up, and Hadley and Sitterson laugh about it. The group reaches the cabin and begins to unpack. Holden is in his room getting ready to swim when he sees an ugly painting on the wall. He removes it and finds a window into the next room, where Dana is staying. Dana starts undressing, not realizing that the mirror in her room is showing everything to Holden in the next room. Holden runs to Dana's room and tells her what's going on. They decide to switch rooms, and now Dana can see Holden. She seems to like what she sees. All the people in the building have come together to bet on what will happen to the people in the cabin. Hadley really wants the outcome to be a merman. A new agent named Truman is surprised by how the others are acting. An experienced agent, Lynn, tells Truman that she knows how he feels. The group is having fun playing a game called Truth or Dare. Jules is dared to kiss a mounted wolf head, and then it's Dana's turn. When they hear a noise coming from the basement, they dare her to go down there. Everyone follows her, and they find some strange things. Kurt tries to solve a puzzle ball. Jules tries on a wedding dress, and Holden is fascinated by a ballerina jewelry box. Suddenly something unexpected happens. The people who were watching the group of friends in the cabin from a secret place were very quiet and focused on what was happening. Then, one of the friends, Dana, found a diary in the basement and read a Latin sentence from it. The diary was about a girl who was hurt by her father, and the Latin words said that they will come back if read aloud. Marty didn't want them to read it, but Dana did it anyway. Suddenly, outside the cabin, the dead family from the diary came back to life as zombies. At the facility, the people who picked redneck zombies have won the pool, including the maintenance crew and the new intern. Hadley is disappointed because he really wanted to see a merman. The group goes back to the living room in the cabin. Jules and Kurt are behaving strangely. Jules is dancing provocatively and Kurt is being mean to his girlfriend. Marty notices this, but the others ignore him. Kurt and Jules go for a walk and begin to have sex due to a chemical fog. However, zombies appear and attack them. Jules is stabbed in the hand, and Kurt is stabbed in the shoulder but manages to escape. Unfortunately, Jules is captured and beheaded, and Kurt runs back to the cabin. When Jules dies, Hadley and Sitterson say something that sounds like a prayer. Hadley then pulls a lever and blood flows onto a tablet that has a picture of a woman on it. The ground starts to shake. Marty heard a voice in his head and saw Kurt running towards him, fighting a zombie. They both went inside and locked the door. Kurt said Jules had died. They decided to block the house and stay together. Someone told them to separate, but only Marty heard it. He asked everyone to stay together, 
but they didn't listen. Dana, Holden, and Marty went into their own rooms, and the doors locked behind them. People at the facility can't understand why Marty isn't doing what they want him to do. They're scared he'll mess everything up. In his room, Marty accidentally breaks a lamp and finds a camera. This proves what he's been saying about the place. As he tries to investigate, a zombie comes in through the window and attacks him. They fight, and Marty is hurt and dragged away. Sad sounds follow, poor Marty. The people at the facility are happy because they think Marty won't mess up their plan anymore, but they're still trying to find out why the drugs didn't work on him. They figure out that they missed one of the places where he kept his pot, and that's why he was still immune to their tricks. Then, something scary happens, blood fills the outline of a partygoer, and the ground starts shaking. A zombie tries to get into Dana's room through the window. Holden hears it from his room and breaks the glass between their rooms. He brings Dana into his room. They find a door in the floor that goes to a room in the basement. They think it's where the father hurt the girl from the diary. They try to leave, but the door is locked. Suddenly, a zombie finds them, and it stabs Holden. Dana fights the zombie off while Kurt opens the door from the other side. They all go inside the RV, and as they close the door, they notice a handprint covered in blood on the outside of the RV. As they drive towards the tunnel, Hadley realizes that the people who were supposed to blow it up didn't do it. Hadley and Citizen try to fix the mistake. The RV goes into the tunnel, but it starts to collapse. They quickly back up and manage to escape. Kurt has a dirt bike in the RV and decides to go get help by jumping over a ravine. However, he hits something invisible and dies. Blood fills in the shape of a jock on the ground. Dana and Holden see what happened to Kurt and realize that Marty was telling the truth. They go back to the cabin, trying to find a way out. But then, Holden gets stabbed in the head and the RV crashes into the lake. It turns out a zombie was in the RV with them. Dana fights the zombie and manages to escape through the roof hatch. She swims to the pier, but the zombie comes after her and starts attacking her. At the facility, they're happy about their successful night. They realize that the virgin doesn't need to die for the plan to work. This is good news because other sites in different countries had failed to complete the ritual. They open a bottle of champagne and start celebrating, but then the red phone rings. Hadley answers and the conversation gets tense. They didn't follow the rules, and someone is still alive. If Dana dies before the others, they will lose. Dana is getting badly hurt by the zombie dad, but then Marty appears and saves her by hitting the zombie with his big bang until it falls into the water. They escape into the woods with the zombies chasing them. Marty jumps into a grave and starts digging. Dana is confused, but then Marty opens a door and they both fall into a room just before the zombies catch them. Marty tells Dana that he caused the tunnel to not explode by playing with some wires, and he found an elevator. They suspect someone sent the zombies to attack them. They decide to use the elevator and see many other elevators containing strange creatures related to the objects in the basement of the cabin. Dana realizes that they were allowed to choose how they die, and they unknowingly chose the zombies. While Dana and Marty are exploring the facility, the people who are watching them are very upset because they weren't supposed to get that far. They decide that they need to kill Marty first because he's causing trouble. They find out which elevator they are in and send a guard to kill them both. The plan fails because the guard is distracted by a zombie corpse in the elevator. Dana and Marty end up killing the guard and leaving the elevator to continue their escape. A lady's voice talks to them through a speaker, saying she feels sorry for them but still wants Dana and Marty to die. More guards with guns appear and shoot at them, so they run and hide in a room that controls the elevators for the monsters. Dana figures out that they can use the control panel to see which elevators have monsters inside. Soldiers with big guns and weapons were attacking them, so they started to press buttons without knowing what they did. And suddenly alarms started to ring all over the place, and then a bunch of scary monsters came out of the elevators one after another. The soldiers were killed and the scary monsters got into all parts of the building and started killing the workers. Marty and Dana were trapped by the monsters, but they found a hole in the wall that was broken during the chaos. In the main room where they control everything, monsters killed Hadley, Lynn, and Truman. Hadley got to see the mermaid he wanted to see before it killed him. Citizen found a way to escape and went through a stone hallway, but Dana stabbed him and he was dying. Dana and Marty were in the same place and Citizen told Dana to kill him 
before he died. Dana was scared, but Marty gave her a gun he got from a dead guard. Marty and Dana find themselves in a room where there are drawings of all the people involved. Dana figures out that there are five stone tablets, each representing one of them Dana, Marty, Holden, Kurt, and Jules. They come to the realization that all the things that have happened to them were part of a ritual sacrifice. The director shows up and they recognize her voice from the loudspeaker. She tells them about the place and what they're supposed to do. She says that the ritual is really ancient and even she and her colleagues don't know everything about it. It's done around the world to please the dark gods who used to control the earth. She also tells them that the scary creatures they saw are nothing compared to these gods. As they stand over a pit, both Dana and Marty realize that this is where the old gods are sleeping. The director tells them that the ritual is supposed to keep the old gods asleep and it has to be done in a specific way. Five people are needed for sacrifice. The first person to die is the whore, and after that, there are four more people who represent certain kinds of people the scholar, the athletic one, the silly one, and the virgin one. The order they die in doesn't matter, but the whore has to be first, and the virgin one has to be the last one alive. The director says that it's up to the gods whether the virgin one lives or not. If the sacrifice is not done correctly, the old gods will wake up and destroy the world. The director says that Marty has to die to prevent this from happening. Marty thinks that if they have to do such a violent thing to save the world, maybe it's not worth saving. When Dana points a gun at him to kill him, it hurts Marty's feelings. Dana is conflicted, but she doesn't want the world to end. Suddenly, a werewolf appears and attacks Dana. When Dana drops the gun, Marty grabs it and shoots the werewolf, causing it to run away. The director tries to kill Marty but a zombie girl from the diary shows up and kills the director instead. Marty kicks both of them into the pit with the sleeping gods. Dana and Marty patch things up and smoke a joint while they think about the end of the world. Suddenly, the ground starts shaking and cracking open. The cabin in the woods starts to shake. Then a huge hand bursts through it and hits the ground in front of it, as the first of the old gods arrives on the surface.